Welcome back to my channel. There is a lot to talk about for this episode. Let's just get right on into it. First things first, what I noticed was there were advantages scattered around all of the camps, like salt bay scattering around salt. You get an advantage. You get an advantage. You get an advantage. Everybody gets an advantage. Tiffany found her beware advantage first. And in her own words, she planned not to share it with her alliance of Liana and Abby. And it sucks because Liana was beating herself up in the beginning of the episode. Um, it opens up with Liana, actually. And she's beating herself up because she really wants to play the game. She came here to play the game, and that's what she wants to do. And um, she missed the beware advantage because it was directly in front of her face. So when Tiffany woke up, she was the one who found it. The next person that found a beware advantage that was sprinkled around by the survivor gods is Sydney. So she finds it and opens it up immediately, doesn't realize it's a beware advantage. And, you know, she has to go, basically. She does not want to lose her vote. It is also notable to mention that Nasir um, confided in Sydney that he basically wants everybody out. Like this guy is playing hard, okay? He wants Danny out, he wants Deshaun out. He's already thinking about the top four. Sydney doesn't want anything to do with it. And she basically told the rest of the tribe and Nasir is on the outs. Next, we have Brad, who found not one, but two Beware Advantages. Basically, he finds the one that Xander found in the beginning, and he finds the new one that we'll discuss a little bit later on. He tells Jeannie, who is his next, and Jeannie is now aware of the fact that Brad found a Beware Advantage. And um, then Brad tells Shan he tells her he found both. And Shan is now convinced that Brad trusts her, that she is his number one. And she's also a little bit apprehensive of him now. Brad now has two advantages and Shannon has been spending a lot of time looking for advantages just like everybody else on her team. So it's a little bit scary that now Brad found both. Now, the beware advantage, the new one. So real quick, there are two options, much like the first one. Okay, each three people, they can all choose tarp, which is very much needed. Everybody needs a tarp, you all know. Um, so if all of them choose tarp, then they all receive a tarp. Um, if they all choose steal a vote, then they all lose their vote. However, if one person chooses a tarp and two choose to steal a vote, Two of them will get the extra vote and one of them will get nothing. So right away, Sydney, she's like, she cannot sacrifice her vote. She's going to choose a tarp. Um, Tiffany, she's like, I could, I could risk my vote. And Brad is like totally gung ho for stealing a vote. He's ready to play this game. He's going to reach for the stars no matter what. Sydney um, was really not feeling Tiffany. You know, she thought it was kind of weird. She pointed out that Tiffany is a tribe of four. So can she really, really risk her vote? And, you know, Tiffany said, yeah. So, you know, long story short is Tiffany feels that uh, Sydney's energy is weird. And she is really just thinking about doing the best for her game and her game only. Now we get to the reward and immunity challenge. The reward is fruit and a slightly smaller bowl of fruit for the first two teams who win. And obviously the losing team goes to tribal and they have to give up their flint. So um, before I get into the challenge itself, we have Brad who decided to say his sentence. 
And his sentence that he said was, I didn't realize it now, but broccoli is just a bunch of small trees. I feel like a little broccoli tree. And um, it was really cute. Um, and Xander definitely found a way to say his dead butterfly relative phrase all over again. And I will let you guys take a look at it for yourself. What you can do out here is introspection. I mean, all we got is time. And I know I probably sounded absolutely delirious talking about how I truly believe that butterflies are dead relatives saying hi. Wow. That was fun. So long story short, Luvu wins first place. You know, Luvu is really the team to um, look out for. They have the most people. If there is a merge, they will be going into the merge with numbers, okay? And surprisingly, Yasa wins. They win their first immunity and reward challenge um, for... Is, is this the first time? I, I don't even remember. But they win finally, so they get their little bit of fruit, which is perfect because there's only four of them. And they get their flint back, which is fantastic because they can build a fire now. And um, so basically, Yua lost thanks to JD. You know, I love JD. He is a breath of fresh air, but he really tried to look cool while throwing the sandbags. And... Um, you know, he lost. He lost for his team. Jeannie gets upset. She kicks the dirt. And, um, you know, now we're getting into the scheming. I didn't mention earlier, but Brad wants JD out. Um, and <laughs> it's really funny, but basically they get back to their camp and JD decides he goes away uh, for the bathroom and then he comes back and Shan notices that there is um, an advantage sticking out of his pants. So she busts his cover and he's like, oh, okay, okay, now uh, I guess I'll tell you guys, you know, I am at your mercy. But, you know, Shan, <laughs> I'll let her tell it to you herself. You're not coming clean, you got caught. That's not coming clean, that's getting caught. We are getting towards the end, so hang in there, everyone. Now we're at Tribal, it's Yua's time to shine. I mean, cut themselves up because they have to eliminate someone. And basically, um, Ricard and Shan are calling the shots. Like, there's no way around it. They are in control of everything. They're in every conversation. Brad um, thinks he's good. I, I don't know how, but he thinks he's good. Jeannie thinks she's fine. Brad is her number one. And um, JD uh, knows that he is the reason that his team is in tribal, but he gives a very, very heartfelt um, speech at tribal where he just reiterates what he told us during one of his uh, interview sessions that Survivor made him who he is. You know, Survivor raised him. He has dreads because of Survivor. He looks up to the people in past Survivors and he wants to be somebody that other people look up to on Survivor. So when he says that, it is not, you know, faking for him. He really, really means it. And Shan, you know, is very emotional. She likes Brad. She likes JD. Long story short, spoiler, 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 Brad, 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 Broccoli Brad gets eliminated. And it's really sad because he he basically, you know, went too hard. Um, as you could see in my tweet, <laughs> that's me right there, the comment kind of, you know, as you could see in my tweet, um, he just, you know, it's like he's Icarus, basically. And he flew too close to the sun, which was two advantages and all this other stuff. And he just got burned. And um, take a look at these tweets um, and, you know, look at them, laugh at them. And don't forget to subscribe to me, comment, like, dislike, just react you something and I hope you guys enjoyed my episode 3 review this is the comment connoisseur and I will be with you guys again next Saturday for another
Thank you.